All right. Hello, everybody. This is James Hartley with the 12 O'Clock Siren with another episode of Lessons on Liberty. This is Lessons on Liberty 2, a 12 O'Clock Siren production. Uh, in the last episode, we talked about, uh, I was going to get into equality of opportunity versus equality of outcome, but I was called a fascist on social media yesterday, and that got me to thinking. That got me to thinking of uh, definitions. So actually, what we're going to do today uh, is talk a little bit more about liberty and its definition. And for the, for the one person who may not know, fascism and liberty are fundamentally at odds. Fascism, by definition, is a strong regimentation of society and um, the economy enforced by the state to include forceful suppression of opposition. Uh, that is the exact opposite of the views I espouse on here and in my everyday life. So let's get into it. Liberty, according to Merriam-Webster, is the quality or state of being free. Uh, it's a good definition. It's a good starting place. However, it is a little broad. Uh, John Locke, the late 17th and early 18th century philosopher and father of liberalism. And when we say liberalism, don't think, you know, conservative, Republican, liberal equals Democrat. Um, liberalism coming from, you know, the crown in, in England is, uh, the, you know, the thought of giving somebody an individual free speech and the right to bear arms. Those are liberal, classically liberal thoughts, right? So anyway, uh, John Locke, who was the father of liberalism, uh, got closer, uh, in my opinion, uh, to, to defining liberty when he said, in the state of nature, liberty consists of being free from any superior power on earth. People are not under the will or lawmaking authority of others, but have only the law of nature for their rule. Now, he falters a little bit later because he, uh, he gets into, like, what laws are consented to and social contract type verbiage. But where it really gets interesting is when John Stuart Mill, who's probably the predominant uh, British thinker of the 19th century, um, he, he wrote on liberty. He was the first to recognize the difference between liberty as the freedom to act and liberty as in the absence of coercion. Uh, to coerce means to achieve a goal by force or threat, right? So the state coerces us all the time. Uh, I think the coercion is the biggest piece of the definition of liberty because uh, when we spoke in the last episode about our first colonists, um, they were fleeing uh, coercion. Uh, they wanted liberty, uh, in their instance, to uh, worship as they see fit, and they wanted economic liberty. Uh, fast forward to the 1770s and the American Revolution, uh, the, war, the war for our independence was prompted, at least in some small part, by what they called the coercive acts, where England passed laws intended to punish Massachusetts and to warn the other colonies that they better fall in line. So there is threat and force for you right there, right? Now, as I said in the last episode, the history of the United States has been all about the struggle, struggle of uh, liberty and power. Today, the state still infringes on our natural liberty and uses coercion to get the taxpayer to fund the state and its activities. So, for example, and uh, I'll kind of I'll leave you with this one. Let's look at, uh, let's look at a seatbelt law, right? Uh, people say, well, you know, it's good for you. Uh, it's, it's probably a good idea to wear seatbelts. I absolutely agree. Everyone should buckle up, but I do not think the state should be deciding what's best for me, right? Now, let's walk this out through... Uh, to its logical conclusion. If a citizen is traveling down the road, they don't have their seatbelt on, a police officer pulls them over and gives them a seatbelt ticket. Uh, if that citizen says, no, I, that's, this is, you're infringing on my natural liberty to do as I see fit with my body and I am not affecting any others, and he does not pay that ticket, he then gets a warrant put out for his arrest. Well, the agents of the state will come to his place of work or his house and they will try to forcefully remove him and put him in a cage. And if he refuses to be put in a cage and defends himself, he will be killed because he chose to do something that affected no one but his own self. Now, if that's not threat and force and extortion, I don't know what is, right? I mean, think about that. I don't know if this has actually happened in real life because I think most people would say, well, I'm just going to pay the $80 fine. But when you get, when you get uh, down to it, there are some people who look at that as an infringement on their rights. I, I, I do, right? So 
I think uh, I'm going to leave you there today. I think uh, as a little bit of homework, let's uh, let's think of some ideas on where the state infringes on our natural liberties uh, somewhere else in our life, right? Just kind of kind of meditate on that, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to everybody on the next episode. Thanks, guys.